Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this keynote lecture. The topic of today concerns motion control of biomimetic autonomous underwater vehicles towards an effective diver robot cooperation. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference for this invitation. Here is the outline of my presentation, and let's get started. To start the presentation, let me just introduce you an overview about my research activities. On robot control so I'm mainly interested in nonlinear robust control adaptive control and model predictive control for different applications in robotics so the first application concerns underactivated mechanical systems second application is parakinematic manipulators third application is wearable robotics the fourth application is humanoid robotics and the last one is marine robotics where I will focus today the talk on the control of biomimetic underwater vehicles. So uh, concerning bioinspired robotics, let me introduce just a basic definition, which is a field of research between robotics and biology. And it includes mainly two broad areas, which are biomimetics and biorobotics modeling and analysis. Biomimetics is the idea of resolving engineering problems in robotics based on the application of biological ideas. And this topic covers a lot of things and aspects, including design, motion control, sensing, actuation, and so on. The second area concerning biorobotic modeling and analysis, it concerns the application of robotic models and principle to, uh, principles to address biological issues. If you take the example of using a model of biomimetic robotic fish, which can be used to study the swimming dynamics of real fish. So this is the area of biorobotic modeling and analysis. Let me introduce you some examples of bioinspired robots. And one of the aspects in bioinspired robotics is the morphology. And here you have some examples. First example, it's like a quadruped, which is bioinspired from animals. So we can have other examples like uh, legged robots, like here, exapods. The case of hoping robots, bioinspired from kangaroo, for instance, salamander robots, worms, dragonfly robots, and underwater fish, robotic fish. So when we are interested in bioinspired robotics, uh, we have different aspects, as I said, that we can mimic from biology to robotics. And these aspects, they may include bioinspired robotic design, bioinspired robot control, bioinspired actuation, bioinspired sensing, or bioinspired locomotion. Let's focus on the last aspect. When we talk about locomotion, we have actually, depending on the environment of evolving of the robot, to have the case of terrestrial, the case of aerial, and the case of underwater. For the case of ter 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 terrestrial, instead of using classical way of locomotion, which is the wheel created by the human, the idea is to use another tool for locomotion, which is the leg. So in this case, we have the case of legged robots, bipeds, quadrupeds, exapods, and so on. And we have also the case of limbless robots. For the case of flying robots or aerial vehicles, instead of using classical propellers, using in airplanes or quadrotors, so the idea here is to use flapping wings. And the last aspect or last environment where we can design by inspired underwater vehicles, it's to evolve underwater. And instead of using a classical propeller, as you can see here, the idea is to use fins as a bio-inspired locomotion system. Let me show you some examples of bio-inspired robots in this Malaya, video. The Tokyo Institute of Technology is doing R&D on an amphibious snake robot. This robot moves by twisting its body similar to the motion of a snake. So this is the first example, which is a snake robot. The second example, which is this robotic dog, which is actually evolving a very, on a very complex 
uh, an event terrain and it can adapt itself in this motion. The third example is a robotic dragonfly which has as you can see on video four wings here is the mechanical design of this bio-inspired aerial vehicle and how it evolves in the air. The, third, the next example is a robotic kangaroo designed at Festo in Germany and here as you can see also which uh, can evolve on a terrain and how it can absorb or how it can uh, store energy thanks to this uh, shale tundra and then it moves forward so beyond the aspect of bio-inspired morphology here the activation also is bio-inspired the next example is this is robotic cheetah developed by Boston Dynamics in the US see the very powerful motion as you form the next example is uh, a flying bird designed also at first in Germany and how we want to this from this video is a very smooth motion of things and the motion of the bird that is the body of the air. And another example from soft robotics which is a budget and there are a lot of examples like the population of the as an inspiration of the ants, of the nation, how the coordination of the ocean is this intelligent behavior. And there still are there still have a lot of examples of design by inspired uh, robots, and here as you can see the cooperation between three robots and the last example here is Salamander. Uh, designed in PFL in Switzerland as a uh, bioinspired robotic uh, system. Now let me introduce bioinspired underwater robotics. And before that, let me focus on some applications of underwater robotics in general. So actually, the idea is to, de to design underwater vehicles for different applications within either offshore, onshore, or inshore environments. And here are some examples of the applications where we can use underwater vehicles. So the first application, it concerns the dams application uh, inspection. We have the case of fish farms. We have the case of air crash investigations, pipeline inspections, power stations inspection, and inspections of other facilities like ship hull, wind park, or bridges. Then to perform this kind of applications, we need to design different kinds of vehicles. Here is just a very small, a very simple classification of marine vehicles to understand the, the, the features of each kind of vehicle and where we can use each vehicle. So the first class is the class of ROVs, which are called the remotely operated vehicles, and they are designed to work at different levels of depth they have a control system that is installed on the boat on the surface and the communication between the robot and the water and this control system is using a wire which is called the umbilical so the operator stay on the surface and tries to control remotely the underwater vehicle then we have the next class it's like the previous one so there is a communication through this umbilical however a specificity of this class Concern is concerning uh, the aspect of locomotion. So these kind of vehicles, they have wheels and they can be on the sea bed and they can perform intervention applications like, for instance, the repairing pipelines or installing pipelines. So they need more stability than the previous class. The next one is the class of the AUVs, autonomous underwater vehicles. And for this class, there is no umbilical and the vehicle is fully autonomous and it has to perform the mission from the beginning till the end without an intervention of the human. However, a drawback of this class is dealing with the problem of autonomy since it is equipped with batteries and they, we can perform just missions of few hours. To perform longer missions, we need to use gliders. So the gliders, 
they can perform missions even for few months, two, three, and up to six or seven months, and autonomously. The next class is the class of autonomous surface vehicles, and also so they are uh, designed for different applications. They can recharge the batteries here using uh, solar panels, for instance. They are autonomous and they can be used for different applications. And the last class is the class of interest of today, which is the class of bio-inspired underwater vehicles. So what is a bio-inspired underwater vehicle? A bio-inspired underwater vehicle or underwater robot is a robot designed based on biological ideas to address technological problems, sometimes also called biomimetics. And they have some features, some of the features of these bio-inspired underwater vehicles. They have a bio-inspired shape, bio-inspired propulsion or sensing. And here you have some examples of these bio-inspired underwater vehicles inspired from fish. They can be inspired from turtles, from eels, from crabs from medusa, from snakes, and so on. And some of them, like uh, the snake bio-inspired robot, they are, they are sometimes modular. And then where we can use this kind of uh, underwater robots? So potential applications, they may include data collection. So in this case, for instance, to measure the quality of water, of to do the detection of water pollution, to take uh, some videos footage or the inspection of some facilities and also they study they can be used to study new sensing and moving strategies here are some examples of these by one spread underwater robots so, so the first one it's uh, robotuna designed at mit and as you can see it's morphology it's very bio inspired it has uh, caudal, dorsal, and ventral fins, but they are not actuated. Actually, uh, the tail of the robot is actuated here. It can move right to the right and the left, and also it's, it has a propeller that push the robot forward. Second example is the Rex, designed by Boston Dynamics, which is an exapod, so it has six fins, and it is actuated by six motors, and it can move underwater for different applications. The next one, it's uh, also very similar to the previous one, which is Madeleine, uh, which was uh, designed at Stanford University, and it has four fins. Galati now, it was designed at Delft University, and as you can see, its actuation system is slightly different um, from the previous examples, so it is actuated by undulating the fins, and the result is a very smooth motion. As you can see here, the robot is diving in a very smooth way and controlled by this undulation of the fins. And the next example is Sepios, designed by some students at, EP, at ETH in Switzerland. And the same as the previous one, it has an actuation system based on this undulation of the fins and the result it's a very smooth motion. So the next one is Robofish which was designed by British DMT, BMT group and it is uh, equipped with different sensors and one of the potential applications of this robot is water pollution detection and it was recently used in Spain for this objective. Uh, the next one is RoboCrab, designed by, at the University of Maryland, and here, as you can see, it can perform different kinds of motions, and here it's moving to go from the dry land or dry, uh, to underwater. And as you can see, it can perform motion on the dry land and, or, and underwater at the same time. And the last example is Aquagili. A robot which is in the Jija, the bio inspired underwater robot. Let me now introduce our vehicle UCAT. So, UCAT is a bio inspired AUV. It was designed actually at the Center for Biorobotics uh, in Estonia at uh, the Technological University of Tallinn within a European project called AROS. This is the design of robot, and it was designed for a specific application. Actually, the application was uh, 
for archaeological applications and especially for shipwreck inspection. And it is inspired from a, a turtle. And as you can see here, it's mechanical design. It includes four fins actuating the motion of the vehicle. Some technical features of the vehicle includes uh, the target application, which is archaeology inspection, like shipwreck inspection. Uh, it is equipped with a camera, and the idea is to do uh, an identification of objects of interest. For instance, it is small and highly maneuverable to be able to go inside the shipwreck easily. It has no propellers, so it is uh, equipped with four fins, and it has a silent motion. And the idea of using the fins is to avoid disturbing the sediments. It is untethered, so there is no cable, and it is an AUV. And with these four fins, we can control the six degrees of a freedom. Some other features concerning the vehicle, and especially in terms of actuators and sensors, are the following. So the robot is equipped with some hydrophones, and we will show you one of the applications where we used the hydrophones to control the vehicle. It is also equipped with distance sensors, it is equipped with a camera, and it is equipped with other sensors like IMU to measure the different angles, road pitch and U of the vehicle. Also, it is equipped with a pressure sensor to measure the depth of the vehicle in real time. And in terms of actuation, it has four fins, as I, as I said before, and each fin is actuated by a DC brushless motor. Now, how this uh, work concerning control of UCAT was born. Actually, uh, this is a cooperation between Tallinn University, Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia, and our laboratory in Montpellier. And it starts a few, few years ago where I visited this lab and discussed about the uh, possibility of cooperation. And I presented my work in, on control of classical underwater vehicles. And then we discussed about the aspects of control of UCAT. And we found that it is very, very important to work on this problem of control of UCAT due to many control challenges that are associated to the control of this bio-inspired vehicle. Some control issues that I can introduce are the following. First of all, it's the fins. Why we choose the fins? Here there is a demonstration to show that using classical propellers to go down and close to and close and close to the seabed, you can easily disturb the sediments using a classical propeller, as you can see on this video. However, if you use fins, even if you go close to the seabed, there is no disturbance of the sediments. And this is the reason why, one of the reasons why we choose fins for the actuation of yucca. However, the consequence of using fins, so it will open the floor for many control problem challenges to be resolved when we design the control for this vehicle. A second control issue, it concerns the actuation itself. As you can see here, the orientation, it's the configuration of the fins to control the different degrees of freedom. If you want to control the surge, you orient the fins like that and you push the vehicle in this direction, this is the X direction, and that's fine. The same for, for the Z direction, for the Y direction, and the, for the three angles, the yo, the roll, and the pitch. But the problem here in terms of control, imagine that you want to control more degrees of freedom. We, want, we don't want to control just one degree of freedom. We want maybe to control two or three or maybe four degrees of freedom at the same time. So how we can resolve this control problem and how we can orient the fins of the vehicle to follow some predefined trajectories on these different degrees of freedom. The third control issue, it concerns the modeling itself. So the vehicle you cut can be modeled using classical techniques used for modeling of any underwater vehicle. So we define the um, earth fixed frame, the body fixed frame, and then we compute the kinematics and the dynamics in one frame, and then we can move from one frame to the another. There is no problem up to now, but now if we are interested in the dynamics of the vehicle, we have to work on the uh, 
uh, modeling the dynamics of the fins themselves, so which is a task which is not very easy. We have performed this task based on this experimental setup, and we identified the dynamics of the fin based on some experiments. Actually, if you want to control the fin to generate a force, generate a, uh, a force, so we need to use either the amplitude or the frequency of the oscillation. If you increase the frequency, you increase the, the force. If you increase the amplitude, you increase the force. We can use both of them. And uh, this is what we obtained when we worked on the identification of the thrust based on different values of the amplitude and different values of the frequencies. And here, the red curve, it's for a frequency of two hertz and increasing amplitude uh, of the uh, of the fin oscillations and then we have identified the generated force actually by the fin as you can see on this curve and this is for a frequency of two hertz and amplitude equal to 30 degrees another control issue for concerning UCAT also it's the uh, control mode so I have actually two control modes the hover mode and the cruise mode and here is the configuration of the fins for the hover mode and here the configuration of the fins for the cruise mode. So the hover mode is used for fine positioning, like for instance, you are close to the target and you want to uh, be uh, the, in very good precision in front of the target and stabilize the robot. So it's the hover mode that you have to use. If you want to move from one place to another, so it's better to use the cruise mode because it's more performant. And here it's the configuration of the fins of UCAT for the case of hover mode first, and then we uh, we can see here how we can control the different degrees of freedom uh, based on this configuration and the configuration of the fins in the case of the cruise mode. And here I have just to note that it's impossible to control the sway, the sway motion for the cruise mode. So in terms of control, we developed different control schemes. Actually, we started by developing some components, uh, basic components, including like PID control and some advanced controllers, linearized control, inverse dynamics, adaptive, and so on. And then we try including these components to design high level controllers. And here I will show you some results for one degree of freedom first, which is the simplest way, case, then I will show you some examples concerning the control of two or more degrees of freedom. So we developed a priority-based control, then uh, feedback-based control based on acoustic vision and deep learning and fusion between acoustic and vision. Let me show you first these first experiments that we uh, performed a few years ago, and it was the first time where the robot was controlled actually in open water, and here it is controlled in open loop way since it's controlled by a user. So there is the user and using a joystick, he tried to control the different motions of the vehicle. Here, as you can see, the motion of the vehicle and the consequence, quickly we can see the consequence here, as you can see the oscillation. This oscillation, it results in an uh, an oscillation on the roll angle, for instance, and this is due to the non-coordination between the fins, the right and the left fins, for instance, of the vehicle. After that, we have designed controllers for a closed loop control, and the simplest way was to design a controller for one degree of freedom, and it was depth controlled. So here we launch the robot from the surface, and then we try to follow a predefined reference trajectory on the depth, uh, and we try to disturb the vehicle to check if the controller is robust enough in this case. Here, starting from the surface, the robot will start uh, moving the fins to go down until he reaches the desired depth. When the robot reaches the desired depth, we try to apply an external disturbance through this wire that you can see here. It's not an umbilical, it's just the wire used for disturbing the vehicle. When the vehicle reaches the desired depth, so he will orient the fins in a horizontal way like that, so seeing that uh, the tracking error is close to zero. Then when he needs to move down, he, have to, he has to uh, orient the, uh, the fins upward and inversely. Now we disturb the vehicle, we uh, 
we move the vehicle to the surface and automatically it goes back around the desired depth as you can see in this video then we have developed priority based control and this was designed for the case where we are interested to in controlling more degrees of freedom maybe two or three or four degrees of freedom, and how we can deal with this problem so to resolve this problem of orientation of pins and controlling different degrees of freedom we proposed different control solutions and one of them is the following it's what we call the co-control with a priority scheduler so in this case the idea was to control some degrees of freedom automatically and some degrees of freedom they are controlled by the user or the operator actually as you can see here we used some reference trajectories for depth and u so two degrees of freedom controlled automatically the measurement here we have the measurement of the depth from the force sensor and we have the measurement of the, all the angles from the imu and then we have this designed as a priority scheduler based on priority functions like in fuzzy logic like membership functions and we give priority to one degree of freedom or the other depending on the situation depending on the task that we want to do and the x here the search is controlled by joystick by the human who is looking to the motion of the robot so the application of this co-control with priority scheduler was applied successfully to follow this square wave or this square reference trajectory and we implemented this controller for different cases so the first case is the manual case so there is no controller it's the human who need to control the vehicle manually using the joystick and we ask the human to control at the same time the depth here in red is the reference trajectory and the u same the red is the reference trajectory and the surge to go uh, following this square reference trajectory so this is the case for manual control then we have here a semi-autonomous control where we control automatically just the depths so the depth is controlled automatically by a controller and we ask the human to follow the u reference trajectory and the last case is the case where everything is automated here it's the fully autonomous case and as you can see if we compare the three cases the best one is the fully autonomous case because the the tracking of the reference trajectories is much better than the two previous cases and then we have tried to compare also the case of uh, autonomous mode for uh, the case where we use or we don't use these priority functions and actually as you can see here the performance is much better if we use these priority functions since the tracking errors here they are improved so this is the first uh, contribution concerning uh, priority based control for two or three or four degrees of freedom at the same time then after that we have designed a control based on accuracy Actually, as I presented before, uh, UCAT is equipped with some hydrophones. So here the idea is to use this acoustic measurement. So we have a pinger. The pinger will generate acoustic signals. And the idea is that UCAT will detect the position of this pinger, will detect the, its orientation, the yo angle with respect to the pinger, and try to correct this in real time. And to imagine a cooperation between UCAT and the diver, so we ask the diver to help to hold this finger and to move underwater, and the vehicle UCAT was able to detect the position of the finger in real time, listen to the finger, control the yo, depth, and control the search X, and to move towards the uh, diver to follow the diver. And here is the obtained results, as you can see. This is the finger used here. This is the hydrophones, they are here. And as you see from this uh, video, the diver is moving here, holding the finger here, and you cut uh, is automatically detecting the position of the diver and is following in real time the diver. And this, these experiments were performed in Rumu Lake near Tallinn in Estonia uh, five years ago. 
Now, uh, vision-based control. In this work, we have proposed to use actually the camera on board the vehicle, and we the idea was to design a controller based on this feedback from the camera and uh, to follow the moving target. And the moving target was this uh, underwater vehicle, which is an ROV, which is controlled by a human moving um, in, uh, in this swimming pool. And the idea is to control automatically you cut to follow this target, which is moving automatically in this uh, tank. And the results are obtained, as you can see from this video, the tracking is very good. And the challenge here is the problem of losing the target, because actually if the ROV is moving away and it is outside of the field of view of the camera view cut, we cannot do anything. And to avoid this, we have to tune, we had to tune the controller parameters and the reactivity of the vehicle to avoid losing the target from the field of view of the camera. After that, we have worked about the data fusion between the two kinds of uh, measurements. So the pinger from one side, the acoustic signal, the vision signal, and we try to combine both of them in one controller. And here is the result. We have here the data acquisition, and we have here the acoustic data, and here the vision data. And the treatment of our processing of this data, the data fusion is here, and we integrated this fusion in an intelligent controller, and we try to apply through the wrench driver to UCAT vehicle. And the application was to uh, follow the moving diver, and here is the obtained results. As you can see, um, the advantages here of combining both uh, measurements, we have uh, performed four scenarios, tracking, uh, visual tracking, then acoustic tracking, and the combination of them for static um, pinger and the moving pinger. So the first uh, here is the, just the visual tracking of a diver. And as you can see, the robot here, if the diver is getting outside the field of view of the camera, the robot cannot do anything. And this is the drawback of this technique using just the camera or the visual feedback. So this is the first scenario that we performed, as you can see. The second scenario is the acoustic tracking. And here it's a fixed pinger, which is here. The vehicle is here and it goes until he reaches the, uh, the pinger. But the problem is when he reaches the, the, the pinger, he will turn around and he's spending all the time turning around because it's not very precise to get exactly to the pinger. And the next scenario, the third scenario, as you can see, Yukat is here and the pinger is here, it's fixed pinger also, and we move towards the, the pinger until we reach the pinger. Uh, and here we have combined uh, acoustic and vision, vi visual signals together to reach this desired target, and the performance is much better than the two previous cases. So uh, this is the third scenario, and we have performed the fourth scenario where we have do the fusion uh, between the pinger, the acoustic and the vision signal. And actually we are following a moving diver. And as you can see, you cut is moving the diver. So if the diver is outside of the field of the camera, there will no problem. So you cut will use the pinger. Once the diver is inside the field of view, he will use both the uh, pinger, the acoustic signal and the camera both together to follow the diver and the performance is much, much better than the, all the previous scenarios. And as you can see in real time, UCAT is following diver moving. And even if we lose the diver, there is no problem. Some examples of videos uh, concerning UCAT on the media, I will show you just two uh, examples quickly before I... And let me start with the first one. Underwater archaeology is an exciting but often risky field. Can robots help humans in these dangerous environments? This Soviet-era prison and quarry in Rumu, Estonia, were abandoned and flooded in the 1990s. Buildings and machinery were submerged. 
Now it's a popular diving spot and a great place to test a new robot, UCAT, designed to help underwater archaeologists working at shipwrecks and similar sites. It has to go into confined places, took a video footage and come back again. It's very little space sometimes there, so this robot can turn, maneuver around all axes and, and uh, come back. Developed as part of a European research project, UCAT works without remote control, following its program autonomously. Its sensors prevent collisions with walls and other underwater objects. The design is biomimetic, meaning the robot simulates the movement of sea animals, like turtles. Instead of propellers, it has these four fins, which make the robot very well maneuverable inside the wreck. And also, the fins help to bring up less sediment from the bottom of the ship, because if you start the propeller in a, in a shipwreck, it will bring up all the mud from the bottom and you can't see anything. Eesti ja Prantsuse teadlaste koostöös valminud roboti U-Cat Designis on eeskujuks võetud merikilpkon. Tallinna Tehnika Ülikooli Biorobotika Keskus on viimased kolm aastat tehitanud robotit U-Cat, mis muudab lihtsamaks alvearheoloogiliste vaatluste tegemise. Laevavrakkides tõsise muurimine eeldab seda, et tuleb ette võtta keerulistest tingimustest toimuvaid sukeldumisretki, mis pole inimese jaoks just ohutud. Merekilpkonnast inspiratsiooni saanud ja mehaaniliste uimedaabil ujuv uukät lahendab ka teise probleemi, milleks on sõukruviga liikuvate masinate poolt üles paisatav muda. Et kui sa lähed laevavraki sisse ja... Aastate jooksul tehtud koostööd Prantsusmaal asuva Montpellier ülikooliga. Projektis kaasa lööva Prantsuse teaturi sõnul võiks see robot tulevikus kasutust leida peale arheoloogiaga teistes valdkondades. The main application of this robot was designed for archaeology, for shipwreck inspection for instance, but we can imagine other applications also using this robot like the inspection of ship hull for instance or inspection of dams or something like that. Uurimistööd jätkuks robotile piisavalt, sest läänemere... Okay, and then, then let me now conclude my presentation. So the topic of today will, that I addressed in this presentation concerns mainly the control of biomimetic and water robotic vehicles in the general context of underwater archaeology for inspection of shipwreck. So to, uh, to resolve this problem, we were faced with different challenges like the nonlinear dynamics of the vehicle, the problem of actuation, the under actuation, the problem of fins modeling, the vehicles modeling, uh, variable parameters, uncertainties, external disturbances, non-measurable states, and so on. So we propose different advanced control techniques based on different feedbacks, either using the camera, so the or acoustic feedback, or combining both of them. And you have validated in different real conditions the proposed control solutions on UCAT biomimetic and water vehicle. And then uh, to conclude my presentation, I have to thank my colleagues from the Center for Biorobotics uh, in Estonia and uh, the head, which is uh, Maria Kruzma, the head of this Center for Biorobotics, and all the students who performed this very nice work, starting by Taavi. Uh, KU, who worked at the, at the first stage, developing the controllers. Victoria from US was uh, in internship, working on the vision controller. Mart working on the pinger. And Walid, who worked on the combination of the vision and the pinger together. So by this last slide, I give end to my presentation. And thank you very much for your attention.